My guest this evening on Dare to Be Great is the Bahamian Olympian, gold medalist, Tony Williams Darling. Welcome to Dare to Be Great. Thank you. Good to have you here. It is truly an honor to see you here tonight on this program, Dare to Be Great. Uh, you're great yourself. The last time I saw you in person was in the Cayman Islands in 1995 when I lived down in Cayman. Um, you were competing in the Carifta Games. Tell us about that early experience. Uh, by that time, um, I'd been going to Grifta since 92. Mm -hmm. I was actually a college student, and that was to be my last Grifta. Um, just an awesome, awesome experience. Um, it was really the first time that I can remember showing out in the 400 meters as an athlete, a uh, Grifta athlete. Um, I think I got a silver medal there, and wow. so it, it took that long from 92 to 95, but you know, that's... But you that's, persisted. Yeah, yeah, that's the great that's memory the key. For Yeah, me. You persisted, and, yeah, that's a mm -hmm. good thing. Um, were you a standout athlete at St. John's here in Nassau? Yeah, I would say I was a standout athlete at St. John's. Um, I actually just went to St. John's track meet today. They're in a house meet. Oh. I have three athletes there that competed today and, um, you know, just brought back a lot of great memories, um, hard work, um, you know, just remembering... Um, you know, just going out there and running three and four events and just representing my house and really where I just got started. So it brought back a lot of memories. Very, very pleased to see how my athletes were responding to the workouts and just being a part of that um, tradition. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was just awesome. Green Giants. Green Giants. Well, you know, uh, Tony, when I saw you uh, winning the, the gold in Athens, mm -hmm. it was such, it, I felt like I was there. And it was such an, a powerful experience as a Bahamian to see you do what you did. Um, and I know just recently, um, uh, Barbados celebrated their first time with the gentleman, and I called a few of my friends in Barbados, and they were excited about that because that hadn't happened. How was that feeling for you in Athens? Boy, um, you know, people always ask me that question. Um, what, what were my first thoughts when I crossed the line? Um, and... You know, for me, I always say it wasn't about the medal. Um, it was just about the personal accomplishment. You know, mm -hmm. I've been running since um, forever. It yes, feels yes, like yes. 16 years total. And um, a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrificing, a lot of good times. And, you know, to finally, finally reach that goal, you think about all those things. Right. And it just makes it worth it. Mm -hmm. And so it isn't about the medal and it isn't about, you know, um, that tangible thing it's really about the things that weren't so tangible anymore and so that's the greatest um, thing that I can remember experiencing immediately after winning the medal. Wonderful. Um, your mother obviously has been a great influence on you. I could see her now in Cayman cheering you on in 1995. Uh, tell me about that relationship. Yeah I would say my mother um, is and has always been my greatest supporter. Mm -hmm. um, just from a very early age, I can remember the sacrifices that she made. Yes. And track and field may be one of the cheapest sports ever, but it's not, um, it's not free. <laughs> no, <right. laughs> there are a lot of things that you need. There was a lot of traveling that had to be done. And like you said, I remember her traveling to every single career mm -hmm. that I attended. And she would be the mother there with um, all the, the goodies at Easter. Right. You know, the hot cross buns and... You know, she didn't just bring for me, she brought for the whole team. And um, she, she's just always been there uh, straight through college. And even as a professional athlete, I was not one of those athletes that went um, straight from college into my professional career. You didn't know? No. And so after college, it was um, finding ways to finance. And my mother, along with other sponsors, was right behind me. And wow. so, you know, she's just always been you know, carrying me throughout this. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, tell, me, um, tell me about the experience in Finland. Oh, wow, Finland. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes when I reflect on Finland, I would always say Finland probably was my greatest achievement. Mm -hmm. Coming Even more than Athens. Even more than Athens. As an athlete, um, there's so much intensity, there's so much pressure. And what I did was try to really established myself after the Olympics, after winning my gold, after winning the jackpot, I tried to come back another year and say, hey, I am still the greatest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that is always a difficult yes, task. Yes, coming back. A lot of time you repeating. find... Repeating. 
a lot of time you find athletes um, doing the world championship goal and then coming back to the Olympic goal. Well, here it was, I was doing it in the reverse Worse. water. And so you're standing there and every eye really in the world is on you. Yes. And your competitors, they want to, they want to strip it from you. And everybody wants to see if you can duplicate. And so, you know, just to pull that off, it was, it was very, very difficult. Um, on top of that, it rained cats and dogs. Wow. And, um, you know, it was just a difficult task, and I think that it's probably one of my most difficult races. In Finland? Yeah. You're back home now, and you are, I noticed you started a camp, you're coaching, and you're developing younger athletes, which is very good. Right. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, I'm doing camps now. Um, I've done three already. I've helped out with the COB camp that happens every Christmas okay. for a week. Uh, very successful. Um, I've done a camp myself for myself during um, the month of August, right here in Nassau. Um, had about 35 to 40 participants, and I also oh. did a camp in Moore's Island, Abaco. Really? Which I would say was probably my most successful camp because of the response. Um, that's probably going to be one of my main focus um, in the upcoming years. Along with that, I also have TWD Athletics Club which um which of course is tony williams, <laughs> tony <laughs> williams darling athletics <laughs> club and um just passing on the olympic legacy wow that's Powerful. that's that's what my club is for and right now we're about four months into our training and we're about two days away from our first competition really mm -hmm. so you're competing against the other um clubs here the we're competing against the other clubs we're competing against the world really okay wonderful <laughs> wonderful you know track and field is um it's a sport where you are competing against the world. Yes, it's about you are. times yes. on a sheet of paper that everywhere so circulated. Yeah. And so we're going to do a lot of local meets. Um, our first meet here is the odd distance that's going to be at the sports center on Saturday. And then our second meet, we're going to Jamaica on really? the 6th state. So Tell Jamaicans, get ready. Huh? <laughs> Tell them get yeah, ready. Get ready for TWD Athletics. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, so. You know, it's not about keeping them here. I think one of the main focus that I want to bring to the athletes is um, exposure. Yes. Um, we do have a lot of athletes that have never traveled to run. Um, also, I have athletes that I'll be taking to the United States to do some indoor meets. Which um, is always good. Yeah, they need that exposure. Um, we, we have the talent. Um, we have the coaches. And so it's really about getting them ahead of the game when they step onto the track so that they're not intimidated in these different environments. And I think the most intimidating environment you can go to is being an environment in Kingston, Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so. now, speaking of the, uh, Jamaica, the Jamaicans have a, a history and a legacy of uh, success in track and field. I mean, from 1948 in London, um, with those athletes, um, how, what, what do you, I've, asked, I've talked to them and asked, what do we attribute to their success? What do you think it is? I mean, a boat just comes out of nowhere. No, he's been around, but he's just finally come out of nowhere. Like you said, I think it is, um, it is a history. It's a history that they're very well aware of, um, just like us. Um, our athletes are very well aware of our um, Olympic history, and we see that with the talent that we now have coming out coming of the out Bahamas. Of, yes. um, that's one thing. Large population, you can't right, de yeah. deny that fact. And... Um, I just think that Jamaicans have been um, track and field giants, and we just have track and field giants in the Caribbean. I think it's very much part of um, who we are as um, Caribbean people, and so I think it's something that we breathe. That's a good thing. This is a fitting note for us to take a break on this one. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> 